Hello everyone. Uh, Dele Momodu has written uh, an open letter once again to the former governor of Lagos State, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And then, of course, he writes in, Dear Mr. President, an illegitimate president we know, of course, Asiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu. I'm, his, I'm writing my third letter to you in weeks. On the first day of what might turn out to be a long and torturous protest in the history of Nigeria, this is what I owe you. Be rest assured that I am a man of modest income who is happy to live within his means and not looking for anything from you other than good governance. I think I'll pause here and just uh, try to, uh, and just talk, talk about something a bit. One of the things I think that is very peculiar with the Tinibus is the fact that they use money. They use money to solve every, of, every imaginable problem they can think about. And they use money to buy. And there are a lot of people who, uh, for them, they've always you know, gone there to get whatever it is. It's either you're getting money or you're, you're looking for power. They're placing you one place or the other. And I think over the years, this has gotten into their head. I remember doing a video sometime, I think that was during the 2019 election, when uh, at, at Bola Metinibu's wife, Remy Tinibu, was actually threatening uh, some, uh, some voters, you know, where they were doing a uh, campaign. And I said, the, the arrogance that led to this probably is from her seeing how different people would come to their house looking for something, one thing or the other uh, for them. And that had gotten into their head. And I think that's what like Daily Momod is explicitly coming out here to explain to say, look, I'm not looking for something from you. I'm okay with my means. There are people who are okay with living within their means and they're not looking for some large stupendous amount of money. I know they will, uh, the, 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 the Tenables have a way of, you know, with those uh, bullion vans that are up to now, the EFCC has refused to investigate. You saw during 2019 election where they brought in bullion vans to their, to, to their house. And uh, I remember the day on you did take up a petition that he took to EFCC and EFCC refused to accept that position. And up to today, nothing, there has been be any investigation, no prosecution of uh, Bola Tinibu uh, over the fact that two bullion vans were cited at their houses, which were reported to be, full of, uh, to be filled with money that were used to buy uh, our, our voters for the uh, during the 2019 election, and you see again recently where Tinibu himself would arrogantly, you know, proclaim that he nobody spent money on his behalf this election. He used this money uh, to buy grab snatch and run along with the with the people's man mandate. So he owes uh, nobody anything. So I think that's one of the things also here that Mr. Dele Momodu is putting out. Um, so let me go back to Mr. Adele uh, Momodu's open letter uh, to, to, to Tinubu. He said, you and I have a checked history spanning decades and I've never lobbied you for appointments after we returned from exile in 1998 and you were governor of Lagos State for eight years and you've been in absolute, in absolute control in the last 25 years. That's to say, for the eight years, and, and I mean, I mean, this whole letter, even though the letter is very brief, but it's very coded, and it has a lot of subtle messages, you know, that are out there. The first one is this, and he, Dele Momodi, he said, look, I've never asked you for anything, and I must tell you something. If you really want respect, if you really want to have a voice, if you really want to stay on in Nigeria, you know, especially when it comes to people who are in political offices elected whether of elected officials or appointees you must refrain from asking them for any favor there's a certain kind of fear they have of people who don't ask for favor whether it's money whether it's contract whether it's appointment whether it's job whether whatever it is just stay away from that and that's one thing you know that that they have a fear of and here is the name of actually pointing out to bola Ahmed in the buddha look I've never asked something from you. And then there was something also he mentioned where he talked about the fact that not only has Bola Ahmed Tinibu, you know, been governor of Lagos State for eight years, but he has been in absolute control. Meaning every other governor that has come in has been more or less like a puppet. 
We saw what happened during Babatunde Fashion last time, uh, after the first year, of course. And what, that's one of the things uh, with Tulibo, I've talked about this several times, is the fact that he will never allow you grow above him. You must be subservient to him. You must be like a slave uh, to him. You must be under him. If you try to outshine him, if you try to do better than him, he's going to come after you. And, you know, uh, Afashola experienced that in his second term. He took Lagos State people saying, no, this man is working, and we want this man uh, to stay on. That was how Fashola was able to get his second term. We saw Ambode. Ambode, of course, couldn't get uh, that second term. And, of course, the present uh, governor uh, of, of, of Lagos State, uh, uh, Sangwolu, uh, that one has been like, oh, you are my master, I'm a slave kind of relationship. And so for uh, for the Tinubus, that's good. And that's also, you know, what, what they want. But so that's imperative what is there. Going back to the letter that Dele Momodu has written uh, to, to the former governor of Lagos State, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, he continued as such and he said, Sir, it has become pertinent to state this, this lest the deluge of blackmailers swarming all over you might think I'm one of them. My motive in writing you is absolutely pure. Now to the meat of this episode, says Dele Momodu. And then he asks in capital letter, did we not alert the government enough? This is legit. Me, I'm adding my own. This is legitimate government. We were abused for advising the president. And me, I'm adding illegitimate president of our country. Some power drunk leaders even threatened and boasted on television that Abuja was a no-no for protesters. And I'm sure those power drunk uh, uh, people he's talking about, Wiki is one of them. Wiki that was power drunk, thinking that uh, Abuja is Potakot, where he does all his shenanigans. He comes there behaving like a tout in Gucci, coming to tell us that we, in our own Abuja, that we cannot come out and protest, that citizens can't come out and protest. And I'm so glad citizens have shown him. And it is just ordinary citizens, like, you know, you and I, not any big... Uh, citizens have taken ownership of their country, and they've shown that no Nigerian is more Nigeria than any Nigeria, no matter the siren that you have going off uh, uh, with you. But today, according to Dele Momodu, the people march majestically on the streets of SCT and the emperors and their acolytes were nowhere to be found. I'm sure you saw what happened nationwide, he said. It is a lesson of history that you and yours must learn. No leader should provoke the suffering people flagrantly. I continue to join other peace-loving Nigerians in appealing to the protesters to maintain peace at all costs. And the protesters have maintained peace. It's the Nigerian police that have continuously gone ahead to, you know, uh, to, to remove peace, to, to, to harm the protesters, to come after them. We've seen in Katsuna say there have been uh, videos and reports that have come out where a policeman with such viciousness using that water cannon ve vehicle, spraying water uh, on, on protesters, you know, driving the car with such force and he ended up hitting a police vehicle and killing uh, his own colleagues and probably in injuring uh, men. We've also seen another security agent who in trying to stop you know, uh, protesters ended up shooting himself three times. That tells you, you know, how incompetent our security agents are and how they are lacking of training. Tomorrow, the idea of police is going to now come out. If that thing wasn't caught on a, a video, and even up to now with it being on video, I wouldn't be surprised that the idea of police will come out and say that it's protesters that actually uh, did that, uh, 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 that, that, that killed the security agent. Meanwhile, they were the ones who did their own thing. I continue to join other peace-loving Nigerians, Dele Momodu said, in appealing to the protesters to maintain peace at all costs. But your government, according to Dele Momodu, uh, which for me is a legitimate government, should improve its terrible communication strategies. For what, whatever it's worth, you should have come out to address your fellow citizens. Uh -huh. Somebody that read the lecture, snatch it, ran with it, bought it. He thinks it's above every other person now. Tilibu thinks Nigeria is Lagos. He will, he will learn by fire by force. The feeling out there is that you've changed from the pro-democracy leader we used to know. He was, he was never one. He was just hiding behind people who were pro-democracy leaders and, and protesting his way. Someone that protests his way into rig election. He's not the one stopping protesters from, from protesting. A state of emergency won't solve the problems. 
The way forward will entail a huge sacrifice. The federal government should downsize drastically, and this is Dele Momodu advising them now, by sacking most of the dead woods imported uh, to Abuja from Lagos in the name of political appointees. Ministries should be marked for cheaper and more efficient uh, operations. The outland outlandish profligacy of government at all levels must stop. The state must replicate uh, to let all avert what may become a revolution. I salute the doggedness of Nigeria's Chief Dele Momodu. At this stage, I don't think there's anything to be added to this. Thank you for watching.